Hi, and welcome to part 2.1 on how to build an RGB laser scanner. The purpose of this video is to get a little bit more in depth on how the red, green, blue laser module is designed. Um, we're going to talk about uh, the laser dichroic mirrors and their mounts, as well as a, a design change that I've made to make alignment a lot easier. So, first of all, let's talk about the dichroic mirrors and their mounts. Now, as you can see, that's this whole unit right here. That is a dichroic mirror in there, which is designed to pass green light straight through it and reflect red light off it to combine them together. Now, the mirror mount that is sitting inside is a modified CO2 laser mirror mount. This is what it looked like when it started off. And I had to obviously uh, cut out a section of it because when you turn this thing to the side like that, and that's about 45 degrees you're looking at, it's going to hit the other wall. The laser beam will not be able to pass through it, so a section needs to be cut out. And that's why you end up with something like this. So therefore, the laser beam has a clear path to go straight through at a 45 degree angle. Now, why a 45 degree angle? It's because uh, the dichroic mirrors are designed to be most efficient that way. Uh, when they were tested, that was how they were tested, at reflecting at a 45 degree angle and passing uh, light at a 45 degree angle. So this is what they end up with. Now, um, as far as how did I mount that one millimeter piece of thick glass into there? Well, I did that with a Dremel. What I did was take a cutoff wheel, put a little slice right down the center of that piece of metal there, and you have a little groove that you can actually side it into. And then, just a little bit of hot glue as you can see I have right down in there. And that's all it takes. And then I've used hot glue on several of my lasers and it hasn't filled me yet. Uh, as long as you have a pretty you know, decent tight fit in there, uh, it should work fine. So, uh, that's the dichroic mirror mount and how they work. Now one thing I want to show you here is where should you be drilling the holes in order to mount this dichroic mirror mount down to the base plate. Well, if you intend to have something adjustable like this, you want to have it adjust right where the mirror is, not somewhere outside over here. Therefore, you can see there's the hole right there that I drilled, which will mount down to the base plate, and that's right where it rotates. It rotates right where the mirror is at, so therefore the mirror does not go out of uh, the rotational axis. And that's exactly what you want to see right there. So, uh, that's how you would do that. doesn't need to be absolutely centered up, but it needs to be pretty close. Uh, that'll prevent you from getting problems later. So, this is what you want to do. So, in building this fourth generation laser, I wanted to improve on any parts of the design that I can. One area that it seems to fall short on is laser alignment. Um, in the past, with my other lasers, alignment is very, very tedious and sometimes very difficult. And why is that? It's because after you measure and you cut and you drill, you're always going to accumulate error. And the lasers will have a very difficult time to align. So, uh, let's talk about why that becomes a problem. We first have to understand the geometry of how the lasers are actually aligned. First of all, the green laser right here, I don't have it mounted yet, yet, but the green laser will pass through this red dichroic mirror and pass through the blue dichroic mirror and then strike the X galvan mirror right over here. Now, I'm not going to have this thing move around at all. It's going to be completely solid, so therefore it's going to be as is. I can't move it. That presents a problem right there. Let's say that as is, it's not striking this mirror over here. What do I do then? Maybe it's a little bit too high or maybe it's a little bit too low. I've got to start putting shims underneath this in order to raise it, or I've got to start sanding it down in order to lower it. That can become a real problem. Fortunately for me, for this green laser right here, it is striking the mirror right where I want it to, to go. But you want it to combine with the red and the green laser as well, with the red and the blue laser. Now, what are the odds that the red and the blue laser are actually going to be at the same height and striking right where they need to strike? Probably very, very slim. Therefore, I did a design change. The red and the blue laser are now on pan and tilt mounts. You can actually adjust them up and down as well as left and right. Now, how is that an advantage? Let's take a closer look. What will happen here is the green laser will pass right through this first red dichroic mirror, like it's, uh, pretty much like it's not even there, where the red laser will actually strike 
the mirror like will strike it like a mirror and reflect off it. Now, if you want to get them to align with each other, you have to have them touch the mirrors at exactly the same point. If the red laser was striking up here and the green laser strikes down there, there's no way they'll ever be able to align on top of each other. You can get them parallel, but you'll never be able to get them to align. It'll be impossible. So, what do you do? You can't adjust the green laser here, but we can adjust the red laser over here because of the mount I made. So if the red laser was too high, I would just actually move it until it actually it is touching at the same point where the green laser is touching. And then I can use these adjustment screws in order to reposition where the red laser is reflecting so it lines up with the green laser beam. And then I will do the same thing with the blue laser as well. And that's how it would be done. Now I will do a video later on um, doing the full alignment so you can actually see how that's done. And uh, I'll see you then.